the money. It's about what we do with the money. And God wants us to release the heart of what He wants. Amen? And so people say, well, you can't talk about money because you can't, you can't expect people to give all the time. <laughs> well, then you can't expect me to preach all the time. Right? If you can, then you can't expect us to pray for the sick all the time. If pe and I'm just like you said, I'm, I'm using you as an audience here for the, few, uh, for the uh, video, just so you know, okay? I'm not accusing anybody here. But the fact is that I have found out over the seven years is that I can do a lot more when there's financial freedom in a ministry. I can help a lot more souls and I can help a lot more hearts. I can help, we as a team can pray for more people. We as a family don't have to be stressed out. There's so much we can do with financial freedom. Wouldn't you agree in your own home, if you kind of can pay your bills, you're kind of free in your mind. Wouldn't you agree? It's the same way it works in the church. If a church is not free in the mind of the finance and they have to figure a way to serve the next service, it is difficult. Now, I'm, I'm talking out of my heart, so you, um, you have to accept this for now, okay? But Malachi 3, I love what it says. Uh, verse 10. And we read this so often, don't we? You say, oh, I heard this already. Yeah, that's why we're going to read on it, because we can just almost rattle it off and talk about it freely without thinking on it too hard. Amen? Boy, you guys are quiet. Lucky that we have rug in this for earlier we would hear pin drops. Let's talk a little bit. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that you may be, that you may ha be, there be, <laughs> okay, let's just start that one more time. Bring you all tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me there, therewith, says the Lord of hosts. Who? The Lord of hosts. Prove me. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that shall not have room enough to receive it. Now he's talking about the storehouse here. You have to understand this first verse is talking about the storehouse. He says, bring your tithes to the storehouse. Um, when you go to Walmart, that's a storehouse. When you go clean tire, that's a storehouse. When you go with your money, you can grab something from the house. Wouldn't you agree? You can grab a blessing or something you need. You can grab milk if you need it, if you have money, right? When you study the word storehouse, that is a place where there's things stored up for the church to be blessed in. It can't be stored up without financial. It cannot be stored up. There's no way that we can run this building without a financial storing. It doesn't work. It's impossible. To give, uh, for us to give the fullness that we can give without that storehouse being full. Okay? It's impossible. It's been proven. It's been proven when we have a good month and we have our rent paid up, we have all our wages paid up, everything's paid up. It's proven that we, we are more anointed than ever. It's proven. Because we're not thinking about how to put groceries on a table or anything. I'm just being real right now. Okay? But what, it's amazing what, when the storehouse is full, what we can do for God is so amazing so amazing and so this storehouse it's so cool it says why do we want to fill these storehouse so there's meat in the house so there's meat in my house so it's meat in your house so there's meat in the house meaning that when there is a store hop we can we can put all the things here that we need we can we can make sure there's good dessert ready for you we can make sure there's coffee ready for you we can make sure there's spiritual gifts are ready for you we can make sure that there's meat in the house are you getting me okay I need, you, I need you to pretend like this is a message for a moment here. Because this is something that I'm not accusing you of because you all are great givers. I realize that. But I'm bringing out a word that God has told me to bring out. Okay? I'm bringing out a revelation that we need to understand so that we can grab a hold of it together as a family of God and saying that we're going to fight for this house. Amen? That's why I'm preaching that. But what I love about this verse, it says, Prove me, therefore, that the Lord of hosts, I will open windows of heaven. It doesn't say windows of cash flow. Just so you know, I'm, I'm going to get to this. It didn't say I'm going to flow, open the windows and just go, whew, cash. No, it doesn't say that, does it? Because the word heaven there means that I will open the atmosphere of my presence. The heavens, it says, if you store up in the house, meaning that when the church is not suffering, the atmosphere of heaven can flow better than ever because my house is full of meat. My house is full of blessing. My house is full of everything you need. Everything you require is there because that house is fulfilled. Now when the, when the tithe comes into the house and when the house is being taken care of, when God's kingdom is being taken care of, and now when people come there, their heavens will open every time they come. The atmosphere of heavens will come down. The atmosphere of his presence will come down every time because the pastors and the preachers and the team does not have to worry about financial stress. 
It says, I will open the windows of heaven. Uh, how many want the atmosphere of God? How many want the presence of God? Well, we need to fill our house. We need to get meat in the house. And if anybody's hearing this on video, we need partnership. You need everything we can to do the work of God because this is a huge work of God. Amen? To me, it's so cool. And he says, I will pour blessing out on him so you can't even receive it. You're going you're gonna to get so much healing that you can't handle it. You're going to get so much blessings you can't handle it because there's no stress. There's only a, a window open. There's a heaven open in this church because there's no struggle. There's no stress. There's, no, there's just freedom flowing through us. Amen? How many want that kind of heaven to open in your storehouse? Going to come and just receive the fullness of the story. Yes, that also means the blessings will flow. It also means prosperity will come. But where does prosperity start? It starts in the kingdom of God. And so when the kingdom of God, when the church of, of God and the kingdom of God does well, the people do well. That, that's, that's, of course there's blessing in you. But it has to start with the, the house has to be full. And when the house is full, now the house can bless. And then uh, the house can bless the poor. The house can bless the sick. The house can bless that. Now, th now the house is full. Now we can see a poor person. Then we can pay the rent. We can do that now because the house is full. Amen? So the blessing flows to the people individually when the house is full. The heavens open. The atmosphere of God opens. Our cheerfulness rises up because we can do something for God. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Isn't it exciting the opportunity as a kingdom of God, what we have in the community, what we have in his kingdom that we can do for others if our house is full? I love it. I want to grab out this seven years, this six, next seven years, our seven-year breakthrough. We're not living in that place of black no more. We want to live in a place where we can bless the people. Amen? We need to bless the people around us. We need to save people. We need to see people healed. We need to see people's food on the table. We need to see clothes on people. We need to see that and through this ministry for the next seven years. Amen? We need to see missions fulfilled. We need to see people grab a hold of salvation like never before. I want to be that church, and I want you to be part of that church. I want to be that church where, where there's a need that this church is there for them. Amen? Let's be that storehouse that is full. And then it says there won't be a room enough to receive it, meaning that every time we can just give, we can just continue to give of the spiritual, of the natural. We can just give. We can give because our atmosphere of the heavens are here. Whoo! We're going to get the glory of God rolling in this place. I know I'm preaching, but I have to. I have to. We have to. This, I'm going to start these next seven years off with full blessing. What about you? I want the full blessing. And he says, I will rebuke the devourer. Now, after you got the storehouse, he said, now I will re rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall destroy... And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. He's talking about the storehouse here too, and he's talking about individually. What is a storehouse and contain of? It contains of a family of God. He's talking about the storehouse. He's talking about the church. He's talking about the people here. It contains the body of Christ. It contains the people of God. Amen? And so when it contains the people of God, he says, first of all, I'm not going to destroy that church. So when the people come against that church, when people come against that work of God, when they come against my storehouse, the enemy will have no chance at it because the house is full and it's full of blessing and the heavens are open. The atmosphere of God is in there and it cannot touch it. And that just trickles off right to the crowd because you're part of the family of God. Isn't that cool? Now, we read this verse often, but I don't know if we read it this way. And he says, on the fruits of the ground, there, neither shall the, the vine cast their fruit before the time of, of the field, meaning that we won't be foolish. We'll be wise with what we have. And it says, the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed. All nations shall call us blessed. What more would we want than when we can, because we are global ministers, that all the nations will say, there is a blessed ministry. We need something from there. There's heavens open in that ministry. There's healing happening in that ministry. There's, a, there's an atmosphere of the heavens there. I want, a, I want a touch from what God is doing there. He says, all nations, for all nations shall be called you blessed, and you shall be a delightsome land. I want to be delightsome. God gave me the right to be delightsome. What about you? Delightsome land says the Lord of hosts. There's an equation to blessing. There's an equation to blessing. People water and water their ground and they think they're going to get something from God when they're not putting seed in it. There's no equation water and water equals harvest. There's no equation like that. It equals zero. Water and water equals zero except weeds sometimes. Most times. But when you put seed, add water, you get harvest. 
So if you're going to get the blessing of God, you've got to plant a seed and say, God, water my seed. Be the blessing over it. I'm being obedient for it. And now there is going to be harvest because there is the equation that is the law of the natural law and also the spiritual law. If you want it, you need to do both of it. You can't do one or the other. Today we have Christianity that's doing one. And let's even, even go further. You don't even have to look at financial loan, but sometimes we, we want all the blessing, but we're not doing the seed that it takes to get the blessing. How many of you want to get the right equation into us today? Amen? Get ready to give. That's, um, that's, this is what this is really about. <laughs> Sorry. Um, get ready for giving. Um, I, I, I figured the Lord just said I have a time for a mini message today.